All right, let's get down to it. Now how I have it set up here, it's not like S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier. It's because in Blast there's really no like actual like C or D tiers or F tiers. All the units are pretty good and there's not too much of a disparity between the tiers except for like A and B. It's like a normal A and B tier. So that's how I have it set up. Plus the ones that are really good are like really good. That's why there's an SS tier. All right, so let's start with the B tier. Now at the very bottom, um, I'm gonna put Assault. Assault's good. They have great grenades. The thermal detonator is great. Vanguard's great with one shotting, but their health is a problem. They can get destroyed in an instant if you're not careful. And in blast, you don't want to be too careful. It's a very fast-paced mode. You want to go aggressive, which the assault can do, but everything else can also do it against the assault. They are pretty good at mid-range maps like Endor and close-range maps just like Kashyyyk. Um, yeah, just having that 150 health and no way to boost it like the other 150 classes is just really hurts them badly. Like the officer has the buffed officer presence and the specialist has hardened infiltration where the assault, the best thing they get is, what's that dark car called? Whatever, you probably know what I'm talking about. The one that replaces the scan dart. Like, that's really only good in certain scramble situations where you're fighting someone and you're bolt strafing and they're missing a couple shots, so you get just a little bit of health back. Yeah, so assault's at the very bottom. Next would be the Droidica. Droidica just kind of sucks. Like their unrolling animation's way too long and their damage drop off is way too much. Blast maps usually have good corners, so it's easy to just escape them before they can kill you and flank them or wait for a teammate to flank them. Like, a smart player can get really good kill streaks with Droidica, but the thing is, you are not doing much with them, especially if the other players are smart. Sure, you can, like, f get good flanks with them if your team's distracting and pick up a few kills and assists, and you're not going to be di dying often if you're playing smart with them, but the thing is, just their setup takes so much that you're not in fights for very long instead you're waiting for your abilities to recharge or you're about to chase or you have to disengage you can't even like chase someone because they can just bait you to their team and kill you so you can't chase people hard because of that on that unrolling animation where you're getting set up because then they can just run around the corner again Um, most times I play Jorica, like, I'm not dying until the end of the match, and I'll get, like, a good kill streak of, like, 15 or more. But the thing is, I'm playing against people who just aren't good. That number should drop down way more. And the kills, your deaths shouldn't go up that much, because Jorica's can survive. That's, like, their only good option, like, their only good trait is that they can survive for very long if you're playing smart. Whereas the other classes, you're usually going in aggressive. Um, you're going in, you're getting a few kills, and you decide, okay, I know if I go into this fight, I'm going to die, but I know I'm going to take down like two or three or even more with me before I do so. 
so it's a good trade off for the team. But yeah, Drake is that's not the case. All right, to finish off B tier is the Flame Trooper. Now, the Flame Trooper, I probably would have had at the very bottom, but the new change, bringing in the new reinforcements, kind of buffed the Flame Trooper in a way because the Flame Trooper had a absolutely terrible matchup against the Resistance Aerial. And the resistance aerial was the reinforcement to go on most um, sequel trilogy maps for the resistance. And flame troopers couldn't touch them at all. It was the most lopsided matchup in Blast. Because they can just fly away and keep shooting the flame trooper, and flame trooper can't do anything. But because more players are going the Capex Spy or the Avisian Gunner instead of the instead of the Aerial because there's really not much reason to go Aerial. Um, Flame Troopers got a nice buff from that, and Flame Troopers can do okay against those. They're really good against the Trooper classes because of the Trooper classes' low health, and a lot of maps like. Jakku and Starkiller have a lot of corners and hallways, which is where the Flame Trooper excels in. Like, if you're running through and a Flame Trooper's right next to you, you're probably going to die. So, they are good, but the thing is, their range still sucks. <laughs> their overload still sucks. Like, their overload, I believe, has less range than their regular weapon. Um, their grenade takes a little bit of time to detonate and doesn't do too much damage. I wish it did more. Like, if it was like an impact grenade, like the heavies grenade, and maybe did like 50% more damage, then good flame troopers would be A tier easily. Like, that would be a great buff to them that doesn't like increase the range of their flamethrower because honestly, if they. If that's the case, if that's what they do to buff it, then that's just stupid. Like, it would not be true to how the unit's supposed to function. Yeah, Flame Trooper is great tanks, but good in hallways, but you're not going to be caught against them too much, especially as regular troopers, because it's pretty easy to go enforcers and aerials and other reinforcements for the for most of the game. So that will round off B tier. Now A tier. Um I'm gonna go possibly a little unordered for now. Um let's go with the jump trooper. The Jump Trooper's gun still sucks. They still haven't buffed it. It's absolutely terrible. Um, they lose to the Rebel Aerial, but they can kind of fight them a little bit. They're good against Wookiees, though, because they can keep their distance against Wookiees and shoot their rocket. Uh, that's true on maps like Endor and Mos Eisley, not so much Jabba's Palace, like Jabba's and other close quarter maps like Kessel maybe they're nearly unusable in comparison to the Death Trooper <laughs> Dice please buff their weapon their main weapon just fucking sucks alright next um, and this is going to be tough to rank these really is the officer the image is blurry because it's a joke because of the flash grenades i had a different one that was a little more black and white but they changed the grenades so i had to try to find a way to make it blurry didn't work out too well so the officer um might not rank it right here but the officer is just 
extremely good. Disruption's a bitch. It's an okay ability. Like, you can usually um, shoot them and kill them with a headshot before the disruption animation completely goes off. So you're kind of safe sometimes. It's It really depends what you are. Plus, a lot of... Um, a lot of units, like the Assault has Vanguard, Specialist has Infiltration, the Enforcers have Overload. So they have a way of um, being Disruption. They just have very versatile abilities. The SC-44C is probably one of the best guns in the game. They can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time up close, and Blast is a mostly up, up close mode. But most of the time, they're not. They're only going to be caught with 150 health, which is the same problem with the assault. So they do have low survivability. It's just that officer is very well rounded with their abilities. Disruption. They can run the turret. They can run um, recharge van, recharge command, recharge, not recharge. Um, the health battle command. Flash grenade is still okay. It's okay at damage. But yeah, they are not too great when caught at mid range and long range. Us, most of the air classes can beat them. At long range, they get beat by heavy with sentry, with mobile sentry. At mid-range, they get beat by Assault and Specialist, and even at close, I think Specialist beats them with the Harn Infiltration and Assault with Vanguard. So, they're the mid-to-close warriors. They're very good at what they do. They're very good at harassing, again, with turret or disruption. They're really good at weakening opponents for the rest of the team. They're very good against Wookiees. And yeah, so they're not too bad. A lot of people are going to complain that Officer's not at the top of this, but this, this isn't Galactic Assault. This isn't Capital Supremacy. You're not getting points. This is, this is for Blast. It's for KD ratio, really. All right, next, let's do the heavy. I used to rank heavy like down here, but I've been playing the class more and it's just really good. It's, I thought the heavy sucked. The problem was, is that there aren't too many good heavies. They're starting to come out though. There's a lot. There's a lot of good heavies right now, but the shield basically wins 1v1s a lot of the time. Mobile Sentry, I did not know how good this ability actually was. I thought it was trash till an actual good heavy showed me that it's good. Like, the description says it does less damage, but the thing is the spread is much tighter, so you're doing more damage because you're hitting more of your shots, so... You're using sentry for long range combat. Mobile's the way to go. All right, and the TL50, great, amazing weapon. Amazing at close quarters combat, which Blast mostly is. 200 health is really good. Their grenade I like, even though it needs, in my opinion, a shorter recharge time. It very long for what the grenade does. Just a good impact grenade does 120 damage. You can usually throw it and get, get a few shots off and someone's instantly dead. I like using that against aerials who are coming out of hallways. Heavy is just very well-rounded. They kind of get fucked 
at long ranges and even with the sentry and at mid ranges. Their best thing is though, I think they have a winning matchup against specialists and I think that's just very important. Which brings us next to the Wookiee Warrior. Um, Wookiees fucking suck against people who know how to strafe against the Wookiee. Like, they nerf their splash damage on the Bowcaster way too much. You get a strafing opponent, they're not taking much damage from your Bowcaster shots unless you're an absolute god at predicting their strafe. Like, I use Wookiee Warrior against my friends a lot, and that's because I know their strafe patterns pretty well, and so I can use it effectively. But against random people you're fighting, you're not going to get that type of luck. Their grenade's still good. The acquisition card lies. You also get the 80% um, buff that the old card used to give, so... Their thermal detonator is still great. Only problem is it takes way too long to explode, so people can usually get away from it. Um, one thing I like to do is throw the grenades slightly behind them. So they are pushed forward. They have to run forward or else they'll get caught by the grenade. And, it, and because they're moving forward, you're in closer range for the bowcaster. So you can one shot or two shot them with the boat caster. So I that's how I like to play Wookie. Bring them into you. And their overload still buggy. That's that's a real problem with them. Like sometimes the overload just doesn't turn on. It just it just resets. It's goes back on cooldown and it stays that way until you die. Their overload's okay. I wish it was better at range, like Wookiees are not good at range, which is why they're so low for an Enforcer. Like the Imperial Aerial beats them just straight up because they can fly away and keep their distance similar to how the Resistance Aerial would do against a Flame Trooper just to less effect. The thing is you're not going up against um, jump troopers as much and a lot of OT maps are low more close quarters um, Wookiees still lose to death troopers even after the nerf it's a lot better um, overload's good at killing the death troopers though kind of if they already have overload out or if they're already shooting you um, there's a good chance that you'll die because you're a massive target, they can hit those headshots easy, and you're going to die before you can get three overload shots off. With headshots up close, you should kill them in two, but they're likely going to have their health pop as well. So, yeah, Wookiees lose to these guys. I think they lose to officers. I think they lose to dead troopers. So... The most common units you're going to fight against on OT maps, you lose to, which is just not good. But they are very good if you're playing closely with a team. Like, two Wookiees together is surprisingly good. As well as Wookiees plus another trooper. Because they can tank hits pretty well, and they can distract and roll, and but that's true with any other unit. But they're pretty good tanks, and if the other guy's distracting for you, you can get up close and get those shots in. So, I think they could be a lot better with proper team play, but you're not going to see that a lot in Blast. Alright, finish off the tier will be... where is the image? Where did I put this guy? Here he is. Alright, Specialist. Specialist, my main, so you can't say I'm underrating them because they're my main, I think are absolutely godly. Um, 
NT242 one-shot headshots on trooper classes. That doesn't matter as much in Blast. The CFE is a great gun as well. Um, mid close, you can hit one shot and headshot and kill people, which is amazing for a gun like the CFE. Um, spread sucks and the and the heat sucks. Like five shots and you're already overheated, but that's all right. So they can't really last too long against good strafing enemies if your infiltration is offline. But hardened infiltration is possibly the best ability in blast of any of the trooper classes. It of any single ability, it's just so good. You can one shot people. Unlike Vanguard, you can still pull it out and do good damage at mid range. You get a 30% defense buff, so your health is basically 198. That's almost the health of a heavy. Its fire rate's very fast, its damage is so good, and it's amazing. And with the resourceful card fixed a few updates ago, like you're getting that thing back online so fast. Like, that card game fixed buff specialist more than any of the other classes. Shock grenade's really good. I've been finding a lot more uses for it. I like it. It's, it's a great ability. And, yeah, you can... Personal shield's very good. You can easily... Um, survive a lot longer with that especially with hardened infiltration as well like just that combo you're living forever you can run away from fights reset have people chase you they're not going to expect your teammates to be around the corner or to spawn on you it's just so good and also the melee card is still an option stealth and that also takes you offline from radars from when you're firing just like the red outline not the dot and that's also good that kind of got nerfed um several patches ago when they um took away the they gave like the x for when on the mini map when someone dies on your team like that kind of blew it a little bit but yeah specialist and it's probably the one like the only like trooper class except like assault because assault can run three different weapons at any range and still be good but specialist is the one class that works on any map because they can work at any range and be as deadly at any range. So yeah, they're going to be at the top of A tier. Let's get this guy a bit bigger. And you as well. All right, A plus. All trooper classes are out of the way, so now we're just dealing with reinforcements from here on out. Got a few ideas of who's in this class, but no definitive one. Um, let's. I don't know who to put at the bottom yet. So let's start off with the droid aerial, the B two aerial. Now, when they changed over the Aerials cards with the update when we got the new First Order Aerial, um, one universal fix that the Aerials were supposed to get were just the effects of their two card of two of their cards passively, and those cards were the ones that reduced the cooldown of their flight abilities and the one that reduced the cooldown of their rocket ability of their rocket launcher 
Now, for some reason, for the flight abilities at least, I'm not sure about the rocket ability. The B-2 aerial did not get this. I'm not sure if it was intentional or not. But they have the old cooldown and no card to increase it now. So they have longer um, cooldown times on their abilities than all the other aerials. And that's a major nerf to them. Especially when they're going to be fighting the clone aerial a lot. So the droid aerial is kind of falling off a bit. Their blaster is good. Only problem is is um, just that it does have it just it uh it has kick to it. It either kick or bloom or both. And the clone aerials gun does not have that at all. So in a lot of fights, even though they have more health they lose. Having 360 health is still good for an aerial though. Only problem is that they can't function as an aerial now. They just got nerfed so hard with the cards gone and no like passive ability to make up for it. They're so slow. Their dodge is the worst in the game. Yeah, the only thing that's saving them is their blaster and their health. They can't function as an aerial anymore. They're just a poor man's B2, um, B2 enforcer, which will bring us to them. Um, B2 enforcer, not much to say. Great blaster, they have the same as the aerial. Overload's good. I think they have one of the best overloads. It's very deadly. Um, their problem is, is that they have very low health for an enforcer. And when you have op an option like the BX Commando Droid, it's just not that good. There's still plenty of maps I'd still use the B2 Enforcer over the Aerial or the Commando Droid, so they're not too bad. There's really not much to say about them. Their Rocket ability, it's the same as the Aerials, is pretty much useless on them. It's great on the Aerials just because of the flight. But not good on them because they can just shoot instead. They have a great blaster and overload. Alright. Next, let's do the resistance aerial. This unit did not really get any changes. Kind of got buffs because of the new cards. But the thing is, they've just fallen off of the meta because of the two new units on the resistance side. They were so good against the First Order when the First Order had two crap reinforcements and they beat both of them. But now that the First Order has two good reinforcements, that at least one of them is better than Resistance Aerial in a in a head-to-head -head fight, it's really hard. They're just not as good. There's no reason to use them. Except except like if you're getting kill streaks or anything, but this is not really based on that. This isn't based around being able to move around the map fast and finding kills. It's just more about viability. They're still great. I think they could um, still go back up a tier. Only problem is that in close quarter situations, the Sith Trooper demolishes them. And 
I think the First Order Aerial can just outfly them with their different um, jet abilities, even though they can the resistance aerial can out damage them and kill them pretty easily. Not too sure about that matchup. I haven't played it much on either side. Just because the other um, reinforcements on both sides has been just so much better. But yeah, can't say much about them right now. So gonna leave them here. In fact, gonna put them in between those guys. And now Oh wait, no. This was the um rebel aerial. Sorry. Resistance aerial right there. Rebel Aerial will do later. So A plus tier, first order Aerial. And I didn't update the image for the new Aerial. So I think they're good. They're not as good as they are in let's say GA because GA is just differently it just functions differently their blaster is okay it doesn't do too much damage Sp having splash damage is kind of nice they just have low health for something that's going to be going up against the Avisian gunner Pretty good against the spy though. They can maneuver around the spy pretty well. I'll have to test out that matchup quite a bit. And and the gunner more. I think they're another unit that can go up. I just need to test them out more. It's just before the Avisian gunner got nerfed, these guys would die in a split second. They still could. But also I think people need to just test out flying with them more and optimize them they're really more of a supporting like harassing role rather than being a straight up damaging unit like the Sith Trooper would be they kind of just distract and harass um, players so that the Sith Trooper can come in and clean up where if you play them like that they they're great. But yeah, that's really just it. Hold on. I just realized I don't have an image for the clone commando. Didn't mean to do Gregor, but whatever. Let's do Gregor. Yeah, that's how long it's been since I made one of these. Clone Commandos weren't even out yet. Alright, so... Hmm. I'm trying to think where I want to place this guy. Yeah. Let's put the Arc Trooper in A tier. Because they're good. Their damage output's high. It's just that their heat is absolutely awful. They, they can't success state like other weapons, which sucks. And they just run out of juice way too quickly. Their abilities are okay. Having the scans really good in Blast. Being able to see where your opponents are. Kind of what they're planning to do. Be able to catch someone alone. 
the shock grenade I think is very underrated right now. And their Parablast is nearly useless in Blast. It's not like a, the, the trooper secondary fire where it could be used a lot more and aimed a lot better. I think the Blast itself is actually, is probably slower. That's why it doesn't hit as much. But yeah, good close quarters. I think they do well against most of the droid units. It's just for their BP cost, I think the Clone Commando is a lot better for what you get. Possibly. Alright, moving on to S tier. This is where we get into the real shit. Now, Vissy and Gunner. I think the nerfs really hit them pretty hard, and in a good way. They needed a nerf. I think they kind of balanced them quite well. Their spool-up time is very long, so I don't even use them too much anymore. Um, their shoulder charge is very good. I think it's a great ability on them. Gets them out of a lot of situations, especially if you're overheated or if you're just trying to run away. Um, their mill ability is okay. It's actually quite underwhelming. I, I think because if you're playing on firing for that long, staying in that one spot for that long, you're just going to get shot and you're going to die. And the health regen on that ability isn't going to save you that much in that situation. It's still definitely useful, but the fact that you need to charge it up and then you your movement's restricted, it's not great. And their left ability is just completely useless in Blast. There's no reason to activate it, ever. So they have one useless ability already. They're still killing machines. They still kill you so fast. Their DPS is insane. I think they can move up quite a bit when players learn how to um, predict straight patterns with them. Like, as a Sith Trooper, it's easy for me to take them down now. Before, it was the other way around. It was so difficult. But losing the health and losing the damage, they're, they're quite a bit worse than what they used to be. Um, I used... Um, Pre-patch, I probably would put them as best in the game. Possibly. Um, I don't think they're at the bottom of that tier, though. Let's um, put the Clone Aerial in here. Clone Aerial, the weapon is insane. It's great at all ranges. It's basically a sniper at long range. And practically like an SC-44 C or TL-50 at close in terms of close range damage output. Only problem is the clone aerials dealing with a lot of either fast or beefy units. Like either of the B2s or the commander droid. And B2 aerial can kill them in one shot with a rocket and they can't do that to them back. Um, they're not as great on maps like Camino where it's a little more close quarters and it's a little bit harder to maneuver around and you're going to be find yourself in situations where you're dealing with multiple opponents at once unlike Geonosis where you can just kind of fly around and pick off people pretty easily um, 
they're possibly the best aerial in the game if things weren't um, error locked, but that's how it is. So yeah, that's really how it goes. And let's bring in the clone commando. Now the clone commando, it's great. I think is overrated as fuck in Blast. Their mill, their mill ability is amazing, but the unit itself is crap at long distances. And once that ability is gone, they're probably just like a unit that would be like down here. Because they basically only have that ability. The grenades are situational. They're still good. You can bring them out. But those take so long to activate. That it's usually not even worth it. Unless you know you're shooting at someone that long range on like Geonosis. But you'd be using aerial anyway. Um, their repulse ability also kind of just useless if you're in range to use it you're just gonna shoot and if you're overheated you're probably just going to die if someone's in front of you in repulse range now of course you can probably get some idiots who don't land their shots and then you can use your repulse and push them back and then maybe roll around the corner and reheat and reload but then they most likely have the time to chase you down and um, kill you. Unless they're basic trooper class in which you can just outgun them at that point anyway. But if not, then no. Their biggest downfall is their health regen rate and speed. Like it takes so long for them to regen health. And in blast, things are so fast paced. That you're not always going to regen your health by the time the next fight starts. Like you, you usually finish a fight and then within six seconds you're already starting to shoot at someone else or they're shooting at you. So their health regen um, delay had I think like 15 seconds which is disgusting like the heavies like the slowest basic trooper class at four at not four seconds at like seven seconds and they have a card that can reduce that by 40 percent as well as the other trooper classes not sure the rate for the aerials or enforcers but it's so much less like they just don't have great survivability in that sense so if you're going up against a competent team with a lot of um, BX commander droids a lot of um, yeah a lot of, a lot of commander droids they're going to zip around the map and get to you real fast and you're not going to survive So I think they're really overrated in that sense. Their gun is amazing, though. At close. It's okay. It's shit at far. Okay at medium. But yeah, I think for their bow point cost, which is twice as much as the aerial, they're just not as worth it. So I think the aerial is better than them. All right, let's now get to the Capix Spy. Spy is pretty underrated, I think. People just don't hit their shots. Sorry, that's just my clock going off. And yeah, you hit one headshot and a body shot on a regular trooper class, they're dead. Now it's kind of hit hard to hit those shots, but it's good. Their um, 
their mill ability got buffed. I don't know what it's called, but it's same as Han's mill ability. Like, it lasts longer now. And that thing destroys. Oh my god, you can get so many shots off at such a high speed, high rate of fire, high damage. It's insane. Like, I can't tell you how many times, like, I was damaged. Two Sith Troopers were chasing me. I popped that thing around a corner and just headshot both of them. And they're down in half a second. Like, both of them combined. Um, their truncheon attacks pretty much... It's not useless. It's not good. They don't have the maneuverability of the commando droid so they can't make use of it like they can with their vibra blade but it has its uses every once in a while their their left ability their scanning beacon it only i mean it you can only call in the mortar strike on takadana like, you can do it in very small certain areas of Jakku, but you're not going to get anyone that way. So you have one map in which they're really good with that, and the rest of the maps, they can't use it to their full potential, so you're just using it to see where certain um, people are. And that thing actually has a wide range, and it, like, hits multiple floors, so... It scans for quite a long range, and you get it as a heads-up display, as well as on the mini-map. So that's very good. So you can see exactly when they're about to come around and just have an advantage shooting them before they even know you're there. And you use it to get health back because you are running that one card on infiltration. I don't need to ask if you're running that card. So yeah, they're they're all right. Um, they kind of lose the strafing if you don't know your opponent. Yeah, like, the thing's hard to hit, but when you do know how to hit it, like, I'm main specialist, so I'm good at aiming and getting the headshots off, so that translates over to the Capex Spy really well for me, and my Capex Spy is better than my Visine Gunner because of it. So, yeah, I'm going to put them up around here. So they're, they can't reach their fullest potential on every map. Just low rate of fire. Don't use it unless you're, you've really got aiming down. But they're a good unit, and I think they might even be better than the gunner in the future as things develop more. So now... Finally, to round off the tier, let's do... the Commander Droid. Commander Droid, their guns is still okay. Low damage, low rate of fire, but they can still do decent damage with it. Jump strafing is godly for them. Regular strafing is good. Um, they can dodge around, which pairs well with the vibro blade. The smoke also pairs well with that. Um, scanning ability is not great. I just wish it lasted longer. Their high maneuverability makes them so hard to kill. And they can win pretty much most 1v1s because of that. Just straight up. Like, they should not lose. They should be 
doing jump strafing, regular strafing, like they should not be getting hit at all once you've reached that level. Only problem is they're going to be dealing with arc troopers and um, clone commandos a lot, which those are some pretty bulky opponents to go up against and ones that will damage you very hard if you're not paying attention, if you're not doing what you really need to do to fight against them. One, like just a couple mistakes and you're dead against them. But you still have a good matchup against both of them. You can outrange the Arc Trooper and the Commando as well. You can outrange them, but even that close, you can dodge around again with the Vibro Blade. Um, just make sure that they can roll out of it, out of the second and third hits. So you can predict that and delay it. And kind of outsmart them. So if you think your opponent knows that they can do that and they're at the right spot to do it, then catch on to that. They're really one of the high, they have like the highest learning curve of any of the enforcers, of any of the reinforcements, except maybe the Capic Spy. But they're just a really good unit for what they have to fight against. Like the clone stain is high damage and you can just zip around and avoid it. If you're good enough. So that's that. Now finally getting to the SS tier, the very top of top tier now rebel aerial the a280 for the assaults probably the best gun for the basic trooper classes and this thing just has an upgraded version of that great rate of fire um great at any range one shot headshot kills at mid this thing is insane I think with the Death Trooper nerfs, they actually have an even matchup against Death Troopers because you can strafe around them, headshot them, and they can just go down very easily now. It's only a 30 damage difference, but that's really all they need to kind of be brought even with them. And they already beat um, the Imperial Aerial pretty nicely, so... They are just really good now because of that. Because they are very good against all the basic trooper classes. And they beat them and they go even with the death trooper, I think. So they have an even or winning matchup against the entire field of the Imperial side. And that goes for any map except for like Jabba's and Hoth. Kessel, I think, is probably a different story. So even those close-range maps, they can still beat Death Troopers. Like, I've been finding myself getting massive kill streaks as the aerial lately because the Death Troopers being nerfed and because they're just easier to kill now. Like, I'm just killing, like, five Death Troopers in one life now. And it's just really nice. <laughs> Next is the Death Trooper. Death Trooper got nerfed. Um, 30 of their base health is gone. So I'm not sure how much that is with the upgrade card. But um, I believe it's 384... Is there a new health with the card? And so, yeah, I'm not sure. But 
they're really good. Their blaster is amazing. Their overload's amazing. Fortify just makes them so much harder to kill. They're what every enforcer inspires to be. Their grenade's good if you have the acquisition card on, because that will buff um, their blast radius, so you can actually pick up kills with that. Like, I know players who didn't even know the Sonic Employer did damage until I've actually killed them with it. <laughs> and, like, good players that have been playing for a while, they just thought it blinded because no one would hit anything with that grenade because they didn't have the right card on. So, Death Trooper is just the rebel aerial for the opposite side. They beat the Wookiee, and they beat all the other trooper classes pretty well. They're not invincible anymore, which I'm kind of happy about, because I did like playing Ariel more anyway. And just killing them as a rebel Ariel has always been so fun, and it's easy. it's even easier now. Like, you can strafe against a Death Trooper pretty well. They're still second best in Blast, so that's that still says something. They're just so good, still. It's unfortunate that their um, Sonic Imploder got bugged a couple patches ago. Like, it doesn't reveal enemies as much anymore, and that's... I think is even a bigger nerf than the real nerf that they gave them. Because with the Sonic Imploder, you can spot enemies on the map, and that's just major in Blast for anyone, for any unit. Because just wall hacks is really good in, t in Team Death Mode matches in modes like that. So it's unfortunate that that's not fixed. Dice, please. Anyway, now, best unit of the game. You might see from process of elimination, but now and only because the Avisian Gunner got nerfed hard. The Sith Trooper. These guys are insane. No unit has abilities, three abilities that work together so well, along with along with their star card setup. Their scan ability, just after four kills, you can see every single person on the opponent on the opposing team and that's massive i've talked about so much how scanning abilities are so good being able to see where your opponents are if they're standing around the corner if they're coming towards you if they're running away from you their right abilities is like the assault's right ability that everyone runs instead of the scan dart except better. It's a sprint, just like the Vanguard or um, Infiltration. Plus, when you do get a kill, um, your health regen starts. So these guys are secretly tanky as fuck because you're getting health regen on your kill you're getting health on kill for the enemies you reveal with your scan. It's insane. You're regaining back so much health at such a fast rate that you can just plow through an entire enemy squad. And you have four people shooting at you. you You've probably taken over 700 damage, but you still haven't died because you just kept regening the health by killing and reactivating your health regen. 
And then their grenade is also awesome because health regen is so important in Blast because you're going to be in fights so much. Their grenade, when they when the opponent gets hit by them, their health regen stops for such a long time. So they cannot run away. Plus they reveal them to you. So even if you don't have your scan activated, you can still see where they are. Like, it's insane. And then you can chase them down because you have your extra speed from your right ability. So you can chase them down easy. Their blaster is just a CR2 on crack. It's... Or a TL50 on crack. Like, except it's actually decent at mid-range. Like, at mid-range, I outgun just resistant aerials, which is insane. And then they also have an alt fire, like an actual good alt fire that you can just use as a sniper for long range that does 140 damage. So any of the regular trooper classes except heavy, you see some guy sniping from across the map, you just shoot that and then just a couple shots of your main blaster, which will hit you, they're dead, and they don't have time to react, so you can kill people at distance as well. They're, like, most games, I don't get kill streaks like you can get with the Sith Trooper. They're just everything, they abuse everything about Blast being an aggressive mode. You can see everyone at pretty much all times. You have an amazing grenade that has a great area of effect. You do tons of damage. Your DPS is great. You have amazing survivability. They are like the perfect unit for this mode. Alright, and... That's going to be the end of the list. Let me know what you, your thoughts are. The most interchangeable um, ones are probably S and A+. I still don't know if I should move the Arc Trooper up to S. I just haven't played them as much because... Clone Commando, just recency bias. Been playing them a lot more. And if not, I'm playing the aerial because I'm just better with aerials. Just the high maneuverability. So, let me know what you think. And maybe change my mind on this a little bit, but this is just generally how I think it is. I hope you liked my images. I worked very hard on them. And I'll possibly see you on the battlefront. If you play Blast on PS4, let me know. I usually play during nighttime on EST.